Every day in our city, tens of thousands of little girls walk into our school buildings. As you would expect, they walk in carrying backpacks filled with papers, pencils, folders. If this little girl is one of the 52 percent of the kids in our, in our city who are living in poverty, the other contents of that backpack are not entirely unexpected. As she walks into school, the birthplace of hope, she's likely carrying hunger in her backpack. Next to that hunger, the diet that does exist might consist of the unhealthy foods which are so cheap to buy and easy to find in our poorest neighborhoods. This little girl is growing up in a food desert. This backpack is filled with many sleepless nights because she's growing up in her neighborhood amongst the sights and sounds of people who have no place to be the next day. You see, unfortunately, in our city, the official black unemployment rate is over 17 percent. As the poor tend to lack access to ongoing health care, you can add a relative's untreated mental illness to her backpack as well. And while you're at it, add in the substance abuse that tends to result from self-medicating that mental illness. This backpack is heavy with the burden of violence. The violence that she knows her brothers and male cousins face every day outside the home, and the violence which she and her mother possibly face inside the home. You see, we absolutely know that the numbers of little girls who are either physically or sexually abused by a mother's boyfriend is shockingly high. Girls who are abused in the home encounter a multitude of problems outside the home. We can absolutely draw a direct line from the abusive home to her problems in school, to an introduction to juvenile justice, to a very likely all-too-early pregnancy. And suddenly, this little girl who began life of promise equal to all of ours is now labeled disorderly in school, a delinquent by the courts, and just another teen parent by society. And because she suffers in silence, all of her pain is just a little dirty secret. And there we have it, a girl interrupted. I know this life all too well. My grandmother was pregnant with her first child at 15. My mother was pregnant with her first child at 15. My sister was pregnant with her first child at 15. And now I'm the single father of a beautiful 16-year-old girl. No, this ends here. We can do so much better. For the past 15 years, I've been a teacher, a lawyer, and a guardian at Lightham for hundreds of girls in the city. I've watched their beauty being stolen from them. We can do so much better. We need our girls safe in the home, safe in the community, in schools, and out of jails. Even if you don't have a daughter, you can help. You can help protect other people's daughters. We do this by teaching our sons, our brothers, our nephews, our grandsons, to respect a young lady's boundaries. We teach them to respect her decisions and to respect her ability to make a decision. Her body is her space, and her space is her own. And this will always be true. Whether she's rich or poor, this is true. Whether she's black or brown or white, this is true. Whether she's gay or straight, this is true. And whether our sons are professional athletes or college athletes, this is still true. Imagine a city where our girls are valued, inspired, and safe. Imagine a city where we understand that loud girls are sometimes actually whispering for help. Imagine a city where we understand that teen mother is an oxymoron. Imagine a city where our girls aren't starving themselves to fit into a dress size pretty. 
Imagine a city where Super Bowl Sunday isn't the most dangerous day of the year for women. Imagine a city in which you'd like your daughter to grow up. We can do that here. I need you to please say it with me. Safe in the home. Safe in the community. In schools. Out of jails. When we devote ourselves to this, we create an environment in which our daughter's promise can blossom. And when we do that, just watch how beautiful and how powerful they can become. Now, I told my daughter that I would end by saying girl power. <laughs> I can't see you. Girl power, honey. <laughs> Go get them. <laughs>